Hello everybody, welcome back to another Adobe After Effects 2021 tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to remove camera shake in about 90 seconds, guys. If you have shaky footage, handheld footage, footage where you maybe kicked it off the tripod and you dropped it, whatever, I can help you with it. Let's get right into this. Okay, the first step is, as you can see here, is I'm loading in some footage. I've got some footage pre-selected from Pexels, and I'm going to drag and drop it into my project panel, just like I did here. The next step is I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to hit new comp from selection. Bang! We've now got a selection. It was zoomed in too far so I'm backing it out. In fact, to get a perfect fit, go to this little button down here on the bottom left and hit fit. And that way it fits exactly to the panel. Alright, cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit preview so you can see that I've got here on the right side the preview button. I'm going to click this, although spacebar does the same trick and it's going to play through it slowly. Uh, it is not in real time, as you can see here. It says it's playing it from RAM, and it's doing, what, 12 out of 25 frames per second. But the point is, is you can see that the, that the camera is bouncing up and down with the girl as she runs through the field. That's the effect that I wanted to show you. All right, now, the next step I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and reduce the size of this, or I'm going to reduce the length of it, pardon me. And the reason why is because I'm teaching a tutorial and I don't need to do the whole tutorial to show you the technique. So I'm going to drop it down to the first, where are we, about five seconds? Yeah, let's do five seconds. Because we're going to need to do an analysis, a track motion analysis. So I'm going to drop this down here to about five seconds. And then I go up to the top and I go to composition, trim comp to work area. So now we're just working with the first five seconds. And it'll be a little quicker here. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got it set to quarter resolution. But if you've got a really strong computer, you can do it at a little higher. But this is good enough to show you what we're doing here. All right, the next step, and this is the important one, is we're going to go ahead and track the camera. Now, I don't see it in this screen, so I'm going to go back to the default. Okay, I'm going to close that, pardon me. I'm clicked on default at the top. I'm going to close up the libraries. And at the bottom, you'll see tracker. Now, there's a chance that this isn't here, depending on what version of this program you have and how your panels are set up. So if you don't see Tracker, that's what we're looking for. Go back to Window and then make sure there is a check mark beside Tracker. If there's a check mark beside it, it means you're in business. We can do this. The next step is I'm going to left click on the Tracker panel and then you're going to see a few different options. The one we want is actually Warp Stabilizer, even though Stabilize Motion would make a lot of sense, but this one is called Warp Stabilizer. Left click on it, like I have. You don't need to do anything else too fancy on this. It's going to now run some calculations. It analyzes the background and it analyzes the camera and it's going to try and lock it in. Um, while it does this analysis, I will quickly talk about the left side here. Under Warp Stabilizer, you're going to see a few different options. You're going to see smooth motion. You're going to see a method four different methods, subspace, warp, perspective, position, scale, rotation, and position. And you're also going to be able to do the different borders, crop, stabilize, auto scale, or stabilize, synthesize edges. The synthesize edges has come a long way recently, but I generally go for stabilize, crop, and auto scale. So it automatically basically locks it in. It actually basically moves the camera forward, and it actually just locks it in, and it stops it. But anyways, I'm going to run this here now. And then I will come back and tell you the rest of the story. All right, everyone, welcome back. It's run its analysis. And now let me show you what's happened here. Now we've got, you can see it's already blown up a little bit. And I'm going to go back to the preview on the right here. And I'm just going to hit space bar or click this button and it'll run through it. And you're going to notice that the camera is not as shaky. It still moves, but it's smooth moving. She's not bouncing around like she was in the previous version. And this looks like almost a very professional camera move. This is, this is probably about as good as it's going to get. Um, I will show you a few other things here. Going through it slowly the first time because it's playing it out of uh, RAM. But there we go. So we've got a little bit of camera movement, but not the big bouncy shakes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple more things here while I got you. The next one I want to show you is we solved this with subspace warp. Generally, I don't use this although this is the default, but in this case, it's done a pretty good job. But I usually prefer position, scale, rotation, or perspective. So we can go ahead and left-click on perspective, 
and now it will show it'll do a little quick reanalysis and then it'll show you what it looks like using a different method it's blown it up a little bit closer I'm gonna hit play again and again it's coming from RAM so it's a little slow and a little wobbly but this looks really good too it's not a huge difference but the camera doesn't have quite as much movement in my opinion and there we go let's take a look here so perspective yeah this looks pretty good um, the last couple things I will remind you or let you know about pardon me is you can adjust the smoothness so you can have smooth motion or if you want this to be a shot from a tripod you can drop this down and click no motion if you do no motion it will recalculate again and it does take a little while to do that so I'll show you what it looks like but it basically locks it in as if you were on a tripod so let's see how long this takes hopefully not too long but eh, it could take a while um, but at the end of the day guys this is how you track footage yeah exactly it didn't even do a, that good a job um, so we're gonna go with smooth motion again uh, because you can see that it didn't even go all the way outside the edges so I would have had to inc blow it up even further because there's quite a bit of motion in this shot but guys that's how you do um, tracking just like that if you want to stabilize your footage it's that easy guys thanks for watching the tutorial I've got a ton more stuff coming up stay tuned